So in this segment, we're going to be discussing a Blairite kind of turning on a star, which is ironic because these are the people he wanted in the party, but that's how toxic things are becoming um, with with the stuff Labour are doing. Disgraceful, I think, about what's been going on. And I talk as a... Traditionally, I'm a Labour right-winger. I, I regard myself as a bit, a bit of a Blairite. I won't be voting for Labour at this election. The Starmerites have purged virtually everybody on the left. They purged them from being selected as candidates from the traditional selection processes that have been going on for the last three years. And in the end, the left gave up even standing. They knew it was a complete waste of time. There have been stories about, you know, vote rigging and, you know, software issues and things like that. Um, Sam Tarry is the one that spoke about that. We don't know what the result of any kind of, if there is going to be an investigation into the software Labour have used and whatever. That something would be found in their past that would disqualify them. Every party should be a broad church. And no matter what your politics, you should have some people on the other side in your in Parliament, in your on in the parliamentary party, or in around the cabinet table, because if all you have is yes people there, then you end up making bad decisions. Nobody challenges the prime minister. Nobody challenges the party leadership, and that is a sure recipe for bad decisions. And a confident prime minister, rather than a weak one, I think Starmer actually is a rather weak Labour leader in the way that he's turned turned a blind eye to all of this. Uh, I, I agree. I don't think he's turned a blind eye to this at all. I think he's very well aware of, of what's been going on. That's why he's pushing the, the Labour Party has changed. I think he's well aware of this. I think he's he's one of the ones helping instigate this um, kind of stuff because if he was against it, he would have stopped it. That's what leadership is, stepping in and making hard decisions. That's what real leadership is. And despite the fact that he can talk about change, he can talk about uh, making tough decisions, he hasn't. He's decided to purge people. That's, that's, that's the top and bottom of it. The way they've treated Diane Abbott is, is shameful. The way they've treated um, Fazir Sh- um, Shaheen is, is shameful. Um, fundamentally, like when, when you look at some of the p- people who've been put up as Labour candidates and some of the stuff they have said in the past, like um, sending the people smugglers to some island off uh, off Scotland in a ferry or something like that. Like, what's up with that? Like, do you not believe in law and order? Um, you know, guys like um, Akehurst, people like him have said some really abhorrent things about people who are um, black, um, Jewish black people or black Jewish people, however you want to phrase that. Th- these are the people being put up as candidates. And so if, if you know, if, if there is a true disciplinary process, also the guy who talked about silver shackles in the context of someone who was Jewish, a real anti-Semitic smear, the guy who racially abused a journalist as well. These are the people that have been let back into the party who have not faced any disciplinary process. Um, the one who called a, a Jewish businessman a, a puppeteer. And then he was let back into the, into the Labour Party without any investigation or formal training just after an apology. So it's very much factionalism. And so this is instigated by the leadership. It's always when you see a purge happen, it's down to the leadership. Who else is powerful enough to make decisions like this? And a confident prime minister, somebody like Clement Attlee or Harold Wilson or even Tony Blair, was happy to have a sprinkling of left-wingers uh, around the cabinet table. In Blair's case, it wasn't very many, but uh, you did have Robin Cook, you did have John Prescott. You know, Robin Cook, a guy who resigned over the Iraq war um, as well. So, you know, you do need strong voices. You do need differentiating voices in, in the cabinet, of course. Um, and despite what you think of Corbyn, he did have that. He did have um, kind of people on kind of the right, you know, sort of the Labour right in, in the cabinet, um, whereas Star was purging them. And again, having a political party like this is not democratic. And now, I mean, if Angela Rayner wouldn't, get, wouldn't have been selected under the new regime. And nor would John Prescott or Robin Cook or Neil Kinnock or Michael Foote or certainly not Dennis Skinner. Or... Oh, I miss David Skinner. Um, but the thing is, with uh, with Rayner as well, like they briefed against her multiple times and they've constantly undermined her with press briefings. So, you know, they're clearly not fans of her. They don't like her. I Bevan or Barbara Castle, it really is a... Uh, it's a mess, frankly. And I think uh, when... Uh, Labour runs into trouble as a government two or three years from now, as inevitably it will, maybe earlier than that, it's going to come back and bite them. And it it will go down, I think, as one of the most disgraceful episodes in modern Labour Party history. And I don't know any previous um, uh, example of it in the past. You know, basically, this is what's happening, and he can see it. He can see what's happening now. And he's not a fan, even though ideologically he'd probably be similar to where Starmer is now, based on the fact that he's saying he would class himself as a Blairite, someone on the right of the party. He kind of he would be on the centre left um, of British politics. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's just, this is a nightmare scenario. And this is something I've been talking about, you know, for a while. They shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be deselecting candidates like this. They shouldn't be purging candidates like this. If the local Labour Party, if the NEC or however you want, to, whatever phrasing or words they use here, if the local people are happy with these candidates, they should be put forward. If there's a disciplinary process because they've taken wrong actions, that should be done. But that should have been done months ago for some of these people who were prospective candidates. When you have a short list of candidates, their social media should be vetted. The thing they did to Fazia was that um, it was very much just literally days before the selection deadline that someone called her, and we'll go through that call um, soon in another video, and they basically said, you're done. You're done. Look at this, the list of tweets we have here. Um, a lot of it was bogus, and you're done. You're not going to be selected which this stuff should have happened months and months ago if they were serious about disciplinary processes because this stuff was tweeted, um, you know, she favorited these tweets or put these tweets out months or years ago. They went back through her tweets from now to 2014. Do you know how nuts that is? Do you know how nuts that is to do that? This is honestly insanity and this is clear cut purging and it's very hard to deny. Factionalism is purging and this is where I disagree with um, Michael Crick here. It's not weak leadership. This is what he's doing on purpose because he's not confident in having those dissenting voices. Arguably, you could argue is weak leadership, to be fair, but it's not. he's not turning a blind eye to it. That's the key here. He's very much involved in this, because if he is not, then he is weak, because he's allowing other people to make these decisions on his behalf, because when you're the leader of the party, like it or not, you represent the party. And so when people make these decisions on your behalf, that's on you. That's weakness. When you're the one making decisions, it's weakness as well because you can't stand to have dissenting voices in the room. What you want is a faction that will back you no matter what. And we saw what happened in the Boris Johnson when that happened. People who promote who should never, never have been promoted. And we've talked about in the past how Labour has a lack of talent within the party. You know, how are you going to promote guys like Wes Streeting into positions and Lisa Nandy into the positions they're in? It's a lack of talent. And even though Labour will have a, a stonking majority here, if you don't have good candidates like Fazishin, definitely a good candidate, very bright and articulate person. Someone from that local community as well who understands their issues and can push to help them out. Um, you're going to run into endless problems and you're not going to do the right, you're not going to make the right decisions because all you care about is power for the sake of it. You want to be the guys in charge because it's pride. And so that's why I know they're not going to make the right decisions. Talking about cutting child poverty but not getting rid of the two child cap, give me a break.